Hello everyone, this is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today we're going to be making these adorable unicorn ATCs. If you don't know what an ATC is, it's an artist trading card. So I'm going to start out by blending some Distress Oxide ink to create the background on a piece of paper that I've cut down from the original pad of paper. It's an A2 size currently, but we will be cutting it down to 2.5 by 3.5, which is your standard ATC size. Uh, there are a lot of Facebook groups and whatnot that you can actually join to trade ATCs, which I've found can be a lot of fun. It's really interesting to get other pieces of work. You can get hand-drawn work, you can get collage work. Um, it's really anything that your heart desires, anything that you, you create, someone generally will trade for, which is pretty amazing to me. So I'm using the scrapbook.com rounded foam blending brushes. I'm really enjoying this um, domed foam. <laughs> domed foam. Um, because I find that it doesn't create harsh corners, which is something that I struggle with while using the flat foams. So I think that's pretty amazing. The stamp from this uh, ATC is the Brutus Monroe Stamp of the Month Club. I am getting this up a bit late, I'm sorry. Um, mail gets here a little bit later in the month, so sometimes I struggle to get uh, the mail on time before the month is over, and this is one of those occasions where I, I just got it a bit late. But it's a beautiful stamp, and next month's February stamp is just as amazing. I'll insert a picture right here for you to check out. There in the corner you can see the tail of one of my kittens, that shade. He likes to sit on the desk and visit me, me while I'm crafting, so that's pretty cool. He tries to steal a foam here, but <laughs> I won't let him. Uh, so with the background, I'm just blending colors that I really enjoy and that make me think of Valentine's. Uh, so I've got some Distress Oxides here. I have Spun Sugar, Picked Raspberry, Abandoned Coral, and Worn Lipstick which are some of my favorite paints. I'm just laying them down in kind of a random fashion. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason to where I'm laying the color. I'm just laying all four haphazardly around the background. I'm using the Tim Holtz glass mat because I find it really easy to blend on. Uh, I find it like the tool doesn't drag against the surface. It's very, very smooth, which is something I love when blending. And I do quite a bit of blending with my oxides because they blend so beautifully together. So next we're going to take some water and splash it onto the background after I've gone over the colors one more time just to make sure that I have no harsh edges and that none of the colors are really sitting more on top of the other, especially the sponge sugar because it's such a light color. Oh, and there's shade right there coming in to visit again. And if you look really closely at the top in the middle there, you'll see a little orange foot. That is his sister, Ember, who's actually just walking out of the frame. You can see her in a little bit of the shadow there. Do you guys have any advice on some other inks that I should purchase? I only really own the Oxides and the Stress inks in the original, and um, like a one good Copic coloring ink and an embossing ink. I've really been in the market for some new inks, and I'm just not really sure there's so many on the market. I'm not really sure which ones I should look at getting. <laughs> Shade's got quite the cameo there. Okay, so here's where I spray some water into my hand with a dispress sprayer, and then I flick it onto the paper. It just gives it a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest. And then I'm going to take my microfiber cloth and just dab up the water that was sitting on top of the ink. Just to pull the water before it kind of merges back in, I find you get a bit of a different look if you leave the water on the surface rather than picking it up. And then I do it again just to add a little bit more interest. I am going to cut these down so the big splotch doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so here you're going to see me using Mini Misty. I'm going to be using the Brutus Monroe Stamp of the Month stamp, which is this, this adorable unicorn with a heart. And some intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp, which is a Copic friendly ink. Because we are going to do some Copic coloring. Now I'm pretty new to Copic coloring. I'm definitely a beginner. So I'm going to link some people down below in the comment card um, that are just amazing Copic colorists that I feel like are great to learn from and, and have a lot of really good information. I'm going to walk you through how I do it. Uh, it's probably not the only way or the best way to do it necessarily, but I find coloring just really relaxing and a lot of fun. So I just keep trying and, and keep practicing so that I can get a bit better. So on the unicorn itself, I'm going to use C0, C1, C3, and C5. 
So I like to lay the base of color, which is my, my lightest color, which in this case would be your C0. So I lay that as a base on the whole image, the arms, the head, the little ears. And then I start working on the shadows. So I put darker color anywhere that I feel there would be a shadow being cast. So underneath the hair, um, underneath the heart on the nose, uh, anywhere that I feel like there should be a shadow cast. And again, I'm not great at this. I'm really new. I'm just learning. So <laughs> it doesn't always turn out quite the way I think it's going to, but it's a lot of fun to try. And, and that's kind of the point, right? To, to play around with new skills and new tools and just have a lot of fun. And coloring is one of those things that I just really enjoy doing. So it never feels like I'm, you know, not having fun doing it, even though it sometimes can be a bit tedious laying all the colors and then I always go back over them. So I did actually speed this up a bit because I don't color this quickly. I'm actually quite slow when I color. Uh, so and I'm only going to show you the coloring on this first one. I'm going to color the second one exactly the same other than the heart. When we get there I'm just going to do it a bit lighter than I did on this one. So here you can see I'm just going back over with my lightest color to kind of try to blend out where I put the shadows. And I aimed for a gray unicorn. That was my purpose this whole time. I wanted him to be a bit gray because I wanted the heart to stand out a lot more. And then I wanted the gray to be easily standoutable against our colorful background there. So here I'm going to start on the heart. And I have RVO2, RVO4. RVO6 and RV21. That's what I'm going to use on this heart. And you can see I have the classic Copic there with the very small bullet nib. I, I ended up buying those by accident and I'm slowly changing out the bullet nibs for uh, brush nibs because I find them a bit easier to use. But I think I'm actually going to change out the, the chisel nib. I recently saw a video by Kathy Zilski who actually taught you how to change the nibs um, in your Copic marker. So that was really informative and super interesting. I can link that video down below too if you guys are interested. So I do a base of my lightest color, which in this case is the RVO2. And then I'm going to go in with the RVO4 to find where I think the shadows should lay. And then I will follow up with the RVO6 and the RV21. Um, and then come back again and blend it all out. So on the second heart, I felt like this heart was a bit darker than I meant for it to be. Um, so on the other heart, on the second unicorn, when I go and color those, I'm actually going to have my base color the RV00 instead of the RV02, just to have a lighter colored heart. So I just I found this one ended up a bit darker than I meant it to, which is okay. It still looks great. It just was a bit more dark than I meant for it to be, um, because I went over it again and because the layer, the markers layer on top of one another, so they keep the color keeps building as you layer them. So here I'm going back over with my RVO2 and trying to blend out the darker uh, shadows that I added, which I meant came out a bit darker than I meant them to, but that's okay too. It's just practice and nothing wrong with that. I, I like how they look in the end. I think they're pretty cute and I, I think they turned out pretty good. So do you guys use Copics? I'm pretty new to them. They're, they're so much of fun, but do you have a preferred method of coloring? Are you more of a pencil crayon person or more of a other alcohol markers or do you prefer just inks and stamping and layers of color or what's your method of coloring that's your preference and do you find it relaxing? I kind of enjoy just stamping out the image and then sitting there and coloring it. It's a lot of fun for, in my opinion. Um, it's just something to do that kind of takes some time and makes it really fun to just sit there and enjoy. So I have actually sped this up a fair amount. Apparently I could have sped it up a bit long faster than I end up did because it's I'm still going here. Um, so now I'm doing the hair and on the hair I did uh, R22, V04, RV11, and RV09. I picked those colors because I felt they kind of matched the oxide colors that I had chosen for the unicorn or sorry for the background um I felt that they really matched that so I kind of did them the same and then for the horn I'm actually going in with um the C the same base as I did in the unicorn so the C0 C1 C3 C5 just I wanted a very light horn 
So here you can see I'm using my tonic trimmer to cut down the ATC size, which is a two and a half by three and a half card. It's the same size as your like playing card. And then off camera, I also fussy cut down the unicorns. Uh, I fussy cut really slow. So I thought that that would just be um, a better way to do it than to record it and let you guys watch it as this video is already like 14, 13 minutes long. So here I took my sparkle pen and I just covered the unicorn's hair with it. And I think I, I, I'm also going to do the horn just to add a little bit of something extra. I, I personally love a little bit of sparkle and I'm going to do that on both before I'm going to glue them down. Off camera, I am also going to do some Brutus Monroe foam tape on the back of both of the unicorns. I have a really hard time getting the backing off of the foam tape, so I tend not to record it because it takes me forever to get the foam tape on. So here I stuck them down in the middle of the ATC uh, with that foam tape. And then I'm going to pull out my bead tray. You can see it there on the top of the screen. And I'm going to pull out some sequins that I think will look really good. So these sequins are the Assorted Moonshine sequins by Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to put them in a little tray. And then I'm going to kind of just lay them on an angle across the card. I just kind of liked how that looked. And you can see my Crystal Katana is a little bit easier to use now. I did end up washing it after the last video to try to kind of make that stick come back and have it be a little bit easier to use. Um, but I still, I find it, it's a little, little bit difficult to use once in a while. It doesn't really want to pick up my sequins as well as I wish it did, but that's okay. So here I'm just sticking down. I used five sequins on both because again, like I mentioned last time, I kind of just prefer the look of an odd number. I find it just, it's kind of eye catching and your eyes are not trying to create a pattern with the even number. So I lay them all down and I, I'm going across the card at an angle because I just I like that look and then I'm going to glue them down with some Gina Connect glue and then I think that's pretty much all we're going to do with them. Um, I did actually oh no sorry I am going to add some glossy accents to the eyes of the heart. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much all we're going to do. So what did you guys think of this ATC? Have you ever heard of ATCs? Is that kind of a new thing to you? How would you make one? Is that something you'd consider doing? I really enjoy the smaller size. I think that they're quite fun. And I like that you go and trade with other artists. I think that that's just an amazing thing to do. Like, it's it's not me just sending a card that someone might, you know, they appreciate it. And then eventually you kind of toss them at least I find most people do not my my mother and mother-in-law though she uh, she actually has a folder of all the cards I've made for her which is ridiculously sweet of her um but I find that this way you're just you're trading with other artists and it's just a love of art that you're sharing and and I mean I have a, a box full I keep them and I look through them every once in a while. I'll sit down and just enjoy the art the editors have created and really appreciate them. And it's just amazing the different art people like to create. There's just so much different ways to look at something, which I think is very inspiring as well. So I just think that's just pretty amazing. So this is, we're coming to the end here. And I just, I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching my video. If you want to comment and like, that would be amazing. And if you want to stop by the blog, that'd be great too. There's a link in the description below. Also, all the products will be linked on my blog. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.